make him fly also. It's Charlotte Soccer Show. John Hayes, Danny Brams. It is match week. Another match week, Danny, is Charlotte FC match week. They are coming fast and furious. And I'm excited to say that it's a Derby match week as well. The Queen City Derby, Danny Brams. Are you ready for this? Uh, the real Queen City is here. It's always been here. I don't know what all these other cities call themselves Queen City. Uh, but I'm excited. We, I think we won the first ever Queen City Derby, right? That we retained the rights to the name. But I believe we lost the most recent one. So it's going to be tough. I'm excited. You're excited. It's a huge preview week. This is just the beginning of our preview coverage. We've got like all kinds of interviews. And so we got a special interview for y'all tonight that we uh, are going to present uh, as the start of the kickoff to this massive week. Because with the win over Columbus, there is something building in Charlotte FC world for sure. Yeah, there's good vibes, no doubt, uh, both here in Charlotte and in Cincinnati as well. The side coming to town is number one in MLS right now. They're lead, leading the league, and we are happy to be joined by Laurel Feller from uh, the what the Queen City News is it or the Queen City, City Press. Press? Queen City Press. Thank you. See, I, 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 we the Queen City. It, it, you've got publications <laughs> out in Cincinnati that we have here as well with the Queen City Press. Hey. Cheers to you, Laurel, and thanks so much for for joining us on on Charlotte Soccer Show. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I sadly did not come. You know, I should have come prepared with a, here's why Cincinnati is the queen city, but I just, I'm not really <laughs> going to, we'll just leave it as it's, it's a fun, you know, we'll have, we'll just argue about it. I mean, it. Uh, is there a queen Cincinnati? Yet. Cause there was a queen Charlotte. That's all I'm going to ask. Uh, no, <laughs> we'll just, uh, I'll let you guys. Yeah. yeah I, it's it's <laughs> totally fun. And for me, I think the Derby is fun because like, the queen city narrative if you will right people in charlotte like to be uh like to call themselves the queen city people in cincinnati like to call themselves the queen city i'm not sure if anybody else in the country gives a shit about either <laughs> either city being the queen city right so it's like it's truly just between charlotte and cincinnati and that's why and that's why it's a great it's a great derby so first and foremost let's just um i, I want to get your insight right i want to i want to talk to you about this match i want to talk to you about this club that you're covering and have been covering since its inaugural season uh, no one follows this cl club closer than you do um, you're an expert on on all things mls as well so if you could just right if, if someone's listening to this show for the first time and they haven't had a chance to see fc cincinnati yet this season they know they're good but what makes this team so good and why are they such a difficult opponent for charlotte fc on saturday night yeah i think it's the defense right now which um you know you can attribute to i'm i'm actually kind of surprised by the defense because they've had some rotation just with um concrete calf champions cup they've had to kind of throw some different players out there you know miles robinson is a new addition this year and he was just with the u.s men's national team for nations league semifinals and final so um kip keller has come in and and done a really surprising job he's a new addition from austin a lot of people you know looked at what he did in austin he kind of struggled and didn't know what to expect from him so uh he's actually started four games and done really well and uh, the defense, I mean, three shutouts in league play, uh, two more in CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, against Cavalier, but you can still count it. Um, <laughs> hey, still counts yeah, as a clean sheet on the counts. book, you know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, just I think that's their, the defense is kind of carrying the way right now. The The attack is has some really strong pieces. I actually thought the attack would be a, a lot further along at this point, just given the new additions and you know, guys that came back, the league MVP with Lucho. Um, but they're they're struggling to finish right now. They're creating chances and just not finishing. So jo the defense. Johnny, when I hear Laurel say that, I think, did we just listen to a mirror? Like, <laughs> like what, that sounds exactly like Charlotte FC. Like, the, we, we can't get away from the Queen City parallels and we can't get away from those de uh, strong defense, underperforming offense parallels either. Well, the first place that my mind went, uh, Laurel and, and Danny, was nil-nil. <laughs> <laughs> And the possibility of that on Saturday night at, at the Fortress. I, I think both teams have have too many good players on the offensive end to to end in a nil nil. But I I think yeah, this for me sets the stage as it's going to be difficult. Goals are to come by 
on Saturday night. And I think that's a good thing. I think that makes a competitive match, but it means if you can nick one and when you've got a guy like Lucho, uh, who is arguably one of the best players in MLS, are, would you be, how, where does he rank for you as far as MLS right now? If he were to rank the top five, top 10 players in the league, where does Lucho fall on that list? I mean, he's definitely got to be top five. I mean, he just scored his 60th career goal and joined an elite list of, you know, he's in the top seven of only seven players in MLS history have scored 60 goals and contributed 80 assists. Um, so he's among an elite class. I mean, he's got a long way to go to catch up to Landon Donovan at the top of that list, but uh, he's just elite. Yeah. Just, I mean, right now he's carrying the team for sure. Uh, he did that last year too. The offense was a little slow coming along um, and he just kind of said, I'm just going to do it myself. He started, he started just moving forward into the, you know, kind of looked like a forward at times and just said, I'm going to score these goals myself. And that's what the team has needed at times. And I think that's why he was a runaway MVP last year. It was just people saw the goals that he was contributing and just how important he was like just, you know, game winners or, you know, they're behind and he comes up with an equalizer. Like he's just done um, some really incredible things and been, been huge for this team's turnaround for sure. Well, we've talked to people on the show, people that uh, cover the MLS really closely. Uh, Sasha question comes to mind uh, uh, on MLS Apple season pass. And uh, he said that the MLS is a, a number 10 league. So I bring that up just to say case and point. Uh, this is that. And, and Charlotte FC lacks that, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. We really don't have that number 10 that just like takes over and we've seen it in action. We saw Lucho, uh, you know, unfortunately, Laurel, you mentioned, you know, Lucho did this again last year. I have to show this sadly, unfortunately <laughs> uh, for my Charlotte brethren, but uh, this was the 2023 MLS goal of the year scored against Charlotte FC where he just waxed us and, and uh, we waned for sure. I think, I it's actually, so. Danny, it's actually pretty reminiscent of Youngman Sons, uh, Puska's uh, goal, the award-winning goal, the, the the best goal in the world a few years ago against Burnley. It was an amazing goal. It was I mean, The run was a little bit further. I think Sons' run was about 70 yards, but that, that was a 50-yard run a 60, on the ball. And, and I vividly remember that night. And when when that goal went in, I I turned the match off. I didn't watch. Yeah, it. I think we were. At, yeah, <laughs> I, th I think we were like this was an EPR. If, if I I think I was at EPR, and I just remember just like this happened, and I just like wanted to leave. And but cheers, there. one hell of a goal. Yeah. I mean, absolutely, and it shows off just yeah. how you know you, you're. I feel like like there's some banter going on the show right now, not between uh, Laurel and I, but but between Danny's graphics. You know, just basically saying that Cincinnati is a one man show right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. <laughs> well, they lost two of their key offensive pieces, and that's where I wanted to go next with you, Laurel. Is like Vasquez and Barreal are gone. What, what, uh, what does that bode? Who has replaced them, if anybody? If it can, if there's just a one man show, I feel pretty good about Charlotte's ability to stop them. And, and so it's not a one man show. Like they do have really talented attackers, and um, you know Brandon Vasquez, uh, he's really doing his thing in Monterey right now. Uh, you know, ended up knocking FC Cincinnati out of right, exactly. Yeah, turned about fair so, play on that one. Yeah. Uh, they they have not replaced him yet. Um, in the lineup, you'll see Corey Bayard is there. Um, he I think was more he was brought in to be more of a Dom Baji replacement, like a guy that you can start and can you know he he had eight goals last year for Houston, I think six assists. So he's definitely a strong piece and uh, probably an upgrade to an upgrade from what Don Baji was, but they are still looking for another striker. Um, they just don't, I don't know if they're necessarily looking for a target striker, but um, they just, they need someone that's a proven finisher. And so while Corey Bayard had a really strong season last year, he's, he's more of a facilitator to the, to the attack. So um, right now they're kind of playing around with what they're doing with him. He's kind of playing more alongside Lucho at times. And so um, that's something that's missing. That might be, you know, contributing to the slow start for the offense. Um, Luca Oriano is who replaced Alvaro Barrial, and he is actually like carbon copy Alvaro. Um, they both went up, came up through the, um, through Velez in Argentina um, they are both left footed, but played as right wingers prior to coming to Cincinnati. And then, uh, I mean, Alro kind of moved around here for a little bit and then became a left wing back, but, uh, yeah, Oriano came and they said, this is what we need you to do. 
and he is very talented. Um, he had an incredible ball um, on Saturday that he sent to um, Aaron Bupenza, and then the shot just went right to the keeper. But uh, he just he has a really um, he's he's skilled. He's going to be a good player. He he's got to work on his defense, but um, he's he's definitely. Um, you can see why he's compared to Alvaro. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember, Alvaro had a really nice goal against you guys um, in Charlotte last year for the equalizer. For that oh, yeah. Goal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, for, for me, sure, that was that was one of our brutal, like, late giveaways. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's for me, like, when you talk that way and you think about it, it's it's the reflection and looking at each other in the mirror only feels uh, stronger, right? Where um, these teams truly are a reflection of, of each other, except for, uh, you know, FC Cincinnati has actually accomplished something. Uh, let's not forget that, right? I mean, I, I feel like maybe a, a Cincinnati fan would hear that and say, what are you talking about? Like, Charlotte FC barely squeaked into the playoffs during its third season. We just won the supporters' shield. How how could these two teams be a, a reflection of each other? I think from a tactical point of view, um, maybe they are, but just from an accomplishment point of view, they're they're not, right? So let's talk about that. Uh, Pat Noonan obviously has done an incredible job with this program. What's it been like covering a team that that won the supporters' shield and then is now you know, it goes into obviously doesn't get the job done in the MLS Cup? It's so difficult to do win the supporters' shield and go win that tournament. Um, so what was the off season like and and what's the the motivation and the attitude for this club and the manager Pat Noon and heading into 2024 trying to do it again? Yeah, I would say the off season was kind of surprising to me. I mean, they came off a supporter shield and you know, obviously they lost in the Eastern Conference Finals, so they needed to to make some, you know, upgrades I think particularly with the depth in the midfield. Um, I don't know that we've seen that quite yet with what what they did with the roster. I was surprised that considering how well they did last year, they had so much turnover. So they ended up having to replace five starters this year uh, from, from last year's lineup. So uh, somehow they're still finding ways to get results early on in the season. But uh, when you have that much turnover, you're just kind of concerned that it's going to be a rebuild. And uh, I guess they're trying to show that it's a, more of a reload. Um, but they, you know, they lost Junior Moreno in their midfield uh, replaced him with Pavel Buka, who comes from the Czech Republic and is really known as more of an attacking midfielder. Um, not quite a Lucho player, but more of a box to box, but doesn't play as much defense. <laughs> so Junior, I think he added a lot to the defense last year. Um, they ended up losing their right wing back with Santiago Arias. Um, he left and um, they replaced, they ended up replacing him with DeAndre Yedlin. But at the beginning of the year, it looked like it was going to be, you know, just Alvis Powell or uh, they were moving Yuya Kubo, who is, you know, he started out as a second striker when he first came here in 2020 mm -hmm. and more of a winger type player, but uh, he's played midfield. He's more of a midfielder now, but um, yeah, he was going to be the right wing back. That looked a little concerning because he was kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, Corey Baird replacing Brandon Vasquez for now. And then um, Miles Robinson came in for Yerson Mascara, which Yerson was a really, I mean, he's with Wolver, well, he's a Wolverhampton player. He's playing on loan in La, La Liga right now. Um, but he, he was a very speedy, just talented defender that just an elite young player. Um, but to replace him with Miles Robinson, you know, that's, I wouldn't say it, I, it's probably an upgrade just because, um, I mean, Yerson had more upside, but Miles Robinson is one of the best 1v1 defenders in the league. And just his, you know, he's experienced. And whereas Yerson was a little more, um, I guess he was a little more mature, immature. Uh, you know, Robinson can step in and be a leader. So that's that's been an upgrade. And I'm trying to think who the other... <laughs> I said five starters. Let's see. I've named now. Oh, and then Luca um, replacing Alvaro. So, um, yeah. So I was surprised just, you know, with the turnover that they wouldn't have tried to retain. Uh, I know, they tried to retain some of those players, but just couldn't match the salary demands, I think. So um, probably a little disappointing for, for some of the FC Cincinnati fans that were hoping to see that carry over. They had to pay Miles Robinson's salary, right? You can't keep paying gas because if you're going to go sign Miles Robinson. Um, I, I, it's interesting that you mentioned all that turnover, and yet the, here they are, the Supporter Shield winners last year, undefeated through five matches this year and, and back on top in the East and even on top of the whole league. 
right now. And when I look at this, this uh, sort of we're looking at uh, on the YouTube channel here on the uh, Sofa Score page of last game that since he had against NYC. In a 1-0 win, it's kind of interesting to me that all there's so many sevens. All the midfielders got like 7.2, 7.3 ratings. You know, Lucho with an 8.1 with the goal and a yellow. But it's like seeing that like these guys who came in to replace some of those starters in this midfield, that's a little worrisome to me. I also think when I see the 3-4-1-2 formation with the wing backs, or you know, you could call it a 5-3-2 maybe, but um yeah, Danny, I, I was going to ask about that, Danny. Just looking at this graphic now, just ask yeah. Laurel: Is that the formation? You know, and so, that again. Yeah, they've they've been playing with it a little bit. Just um, so they normally play it. Yeah, it's more of a three, four, one, two. But with Corey Bayard, like I think they are kind of seeing that he is so much. I mean, he touches the ball a lot for a forward. Um, and he last game, I think he had the most or maybe it was the game before uh, he had the most progressive passes and he's the forward. Like you don't normally see that. So I think they've, so they've moved it to more of a three, four, two, one, but it seems like they're kind of going back and forth on that. So um, probably the two up at the top is probably what you would expect just because that's what they've, you know, they won their supporter shield with that formation. Um, obviously it's different players, but uh, that's kind of why that they've kind of been tinkering with it tinkering with it like we've been seeing shot um they've been creating chances but the shots just haven't been falling and then the, um so they've been kind of trying to get Corey Bayard in a better spot for you know what he can bring to the attack and uh yeah so uh I would probably still expect the two up at the top interesting I wonder if Charlotte FC would uh, ever employ a, a <laughs> tactic like that Danny uh, but and Enzo Capetti you were at practice today uh, we're, we're recording this on Wednesday. We'll be we'll be at practice on Thursday as well. Enzo Capetti wasn't participating in, in the in the training, was he, Danny? Not a full participant. Uh, he was working off to the side uh, on like the sort of the rehabby area for sure. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep an eye out to see because it would be fun to match. You know, if if Dean has a Dean Smith has an opportunity to say, oh, this team's going to try out two strikers, maybe I could do the same thing. That would be fun. And all of a sudden, that nil nil probably uh, goes into the bin very quickly, and then we could see some goals on on saturday night i for me it's a it's a fun match i'm excited about this one danny you think it's winnable for charlotte fc i mean for what it's worth right you talked about uh cincinnati being being unbeaten to start the season uh five games charlotte fc is unbeaten at home for 12 games in a row how does that suit you laurel i mean what is what is what is how does cincy prepare for charlotte because you got to come to our place i mean you know like what do you got? What does Charlotte feel like from a Cincy point of view? I guess I want to know. I think that the turf is always concerning for uh, FC Cincinnati, <laughs> but yeah. um, no, I, I mean, they've actually done pretty well on the road. That you know, it almost seemed like they were struggling more at home. You know, they had two scoreless draws at home to start out, and then um, you know, just the 1 0 win against. Um, New York City FC uh, they went on the road and you know also on turf at New England and they had tons of rotation because it was coming off they had come from they played Monterey on th that Thursday um, ended up staying overnight and flew Friday to straight to Boston or Foxborough whatever um, but had some travel delays and they they ended up changing their lineup you know to get some fresh legs in there and they you know I know New England's probably not the best, you know, barometer of success, but, yeah. uh, you know, they ended up getting a, I think it was two, two, one win, um, on the road, considering all that. So they've done well, they went to Chicago, probably could have played better, got a win there. Um, uh, so they've actually done pretty well on the road, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I just in hearing about Charlotte and just some of the similarities that you guys have mentioned, you know, that was something I, I noticed too is just like the scoring just hasn't been there for them. So it does seem like it could be a def defensive battle. Um, I, you know, I, I do think FC Cincinnati is very strong defensively. So I probably still give them a nod a little bit on just that alone. <laughs> let me, let me give you a head start real quick on your post game article. I'm just get, or, you know, you can, I'm going to show you a clip since I, since I tortured our own fan base and showed you, the uh, showed the the uh, Acosta goal from last year, the goal of the year. I got to show this, and just if you if you're not familiar with this, Laurel, I think you're gonna like it. 88th minute, forward for Ajiman, Ajiman in the area, Ajiman a shot, he scores! Patrick Ajiman doubles the Charlotte lead. 
lead and a little cushion against Columbus. Patrick Ajiman leading the way, dealing with adversity. I mean, that's a rocket with the left foot from our young our young striker. Danny, so, uh, Danny, you're like Danny. You're trying, it, Laurel's taking her. You know, she's taking time out of her day, her busy day <laughs> as a real journalist, and you're trying to just you know debate and banter with her on the show. <laughs> I know. He's here I for know, a reason because she's so knowledgeable about this this matchup. You, you you're. You're putting this energy towards the wrong person. How do we get some? No, I, I appreciate that though, because I actually was talking with someone from MLSsoccer.com that, you know, he, he's local, but he, uh, you know, has a broader view of the league than I do. And he was, I was like, you know, what do I need to know about Charlotte? And he's, he mentioned Patrick and he's like, if you could say his name, you might win some points. <laughs> I don't think I can say it. Ajima. Oh Ajimong, Ajimong, um, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he no, did. He me, gave me a heads up. The whole world's gonna know it soon enough. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that wasn't a good goal. It's what, what's what's interesting about Patrick is is that he's 23 years old. His story is is fascinating, right? I think he's he's a young American player that that came up through the American soccer system that I think the three of us know is is pretty broken. And there's there's a lot of people that that have a ton of talent that might not be in the best situation that never really get a look. And somehow Patrick has found himself in this situation. I've I've said before that uh, you know, sometimes you got to strike gold and be lucky. And I think Patrick being drafted to Charlotte FC was the best thing that could have ever happened to him, right? Because he gets he gets drafted to a club that basically has no expectations whatsoever. The city has no mm-hmm. clue who any of these players are, and he's got a total blank slate. And uh, his his past as a as a player that really didn't get the attention that he deserved. It didn't matter anymore. And he's, he's had a chance to step up here. He played an MLS next pro last season. He did so really well. Um, so Patrick is, is, is somebody that should step in, which is the, the funny part about this Laurel is that he's not, he's not a DP. Uh, you know, he's just a, a backup striker on the squad. And Enzo Capetti is, is missing this match. And maybe that's a question for you. Right. And, and it's, it's a good question on, on how people view Enzo Capetti. Like, does it even matter to Cincinnati that Enzo Capetti is out in this match like does it does it mean anything to you or, or, or to a, as you're covering this this team or do you think the club is is even considering oh we're catching a break because Capetti's not in I mean that certainly could be the case uh I know from my perspective like I'm trying to study up on everyone and I think the names are so complicated. I'm just having a hard time retaining all of these individuals of who's you know who Fair am enough. I to watch but no I I think um I, th- I think FC Cincinnati is just pretty confident in in who they have on their squad. They, you know, they tend to not, uh, you know, they're not overlooking any opponents. But whenever we ask about, you know, certain individuals on the other teams, it's like, well, we're we're focusing on what we need to do, what we need to improve. And so, um, you know, any talented player that that might be missing is, you know, that that helps. But I think that they're they're mostly just confident regardless of who they're facing at this point. So that's, it's, that's, this is a big change from years past. <laughs> totally true, Danny. And I'll let you jump in here. I just want to say real quick, that's MLS, right? And, and I think what you just said right there is how people feel about MLS, how a lot of fan bases feel about MLS, where you roll into your home stadium and you know all the guys on your squad like the back of your hand, but you see the 11, other 11 from, uh, let's say um, – let's pick a team, Minnesota, right? Minnesota rolls into Charlotte and there's 30,000 people. <laughs> and you're like, who's on this team? Except for Timo Pukki, of course, because everybody knows about a Pukki party. There's yeah, a lot I, of, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say, you guys see, it seems like there's a lot of young, talented players, like you mentioned, Patrick, but like everything I read is just how they're really cultivating, like from their crown, crown legacy, that's the MLS Next Pro team. Like mm-hmm. that, they really brought in some good players from that squad, and uh, seems like they're going about their just developing young players the right way. Yeah, totally. It's a big focus here, and uh, they really invested huge in Crown Legacy in the first year, so it it's paid off with sending a lot of guys to the first team. Laurel, I want to thank you so much for like lending your insight and and like Johnny said, allowing me to joke around with you and and try to you know push the banter a little bit. I can't help myself sometimes, even when we have a, a respectable, distinguished guest here but i also want to talk to you real quick a quick tangent before we go because i'm a huge charlotte fc fan i'm also a big time fantasy soccer player and the game i love to play is called so rare it's it's a 
game that you have probably never played, but you may be familiar with when I bring up the name because there's crazy, crazy fantasy players uh, that play this game. And you are someone who gets requests all the time from the crazies like, hey, tell me about my so rare players. Are they are they going in this week or not? You know, you can see these are some of my Charlotte cards that I collect. It's like a game where you, you know, you play, uh, you know, with cards of fantasy guys and you put them in like uh, and then you collect the cards. So you can play them week after week. So regardless, you got all these uh, rules and and the rule of this game is that you have to sort of put your lineups in early. Right. So people are always want to know, like, who's going to play, who's going to start. And you're just known you're famous in the fantasy community amongst all the teams as one of the very best and most patient beat writers in dealing with the crazy fantasy people who aggressively are trying to get this info because many people uh, through Twitter is usually the way. And many people will be like, I see so many beat writers, you know, that are covering a team. They're like, man, who are all these so rare players coming after me? But you've always been very gracious with us. And for that, I just wanted to say, thank you. I love the so rare players. I mean, I, I actually end up getting all these random subscribers that people just want to get. Cause I put out a training note from every day of training, you know, I just, whatever I see, you know, who's in, who's out. And I know that helps. And I actually, I'm a champion for, I just feel like those injury reports that the league puts out are not good enough. Like the, the league is getting, I mean, they have sponsors that are, you know, gambling websites and, uh, they're making money from these companies that really I I'm surprised they invest in the league when there is not very much transparency as far as far as injuries. Uh, you know, I do cover the Bengals for the Dayton Daily News here and I'm used to the NFL where you get those daily updates and, you know, they get fined if they don't <laughs> report something. So um, I don't expect that to happen in MLS anytime soon, but I would like to see something a little more close because I do feel like they profit off the fans in that way. And um, I think it should be more transparent. So I do what I can to help the fantasy players. Well, and for what it's worth, some clubs are different than others and we don't need to name any names or point any fingers, uh, but some clubs, the, the, every club has the ability to decide um, how they, they want to handle uh, media and, and how they want to handle transparency and, and how uh, approachable they want to be. And uh, I got just got a ch text about uh, Charlotte FC president Joe Labou, and I literally just I'm literally saying he's as approachable as it gets. Like he's a real luxury to have Charlotte FC's president because he sets the the bar at the very top of the organization, and and MLS as a whole is is difficult, right? And I think one thing I would point to is MLS Media Day, right? It's like it doesn't even exist. It's not a thing. And it's it's just purely for probably Apple and, it, and no local writers get invited out to it. At least I don't. Maybe you do, Laura. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I get to invite, but it's very hard. Like it's always in LA or my like, and it's I don't feel like yeah, it's it's not. They need to make a bigger deal about it and give you more heads up and right. notice and yeah. You know, it's not even like DPs that are, I mean, some DPs are there, right? But yeah. you think that heading into an MLS season, considering, you know, the the league is a, a majority owner in all of its clubs, um, they would have the ability to, to put their most talented players out there and say, hey, this is why you need to watch MLS this season. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't feel like that happens to start the season. It feels like it's more of a photo shoot or you know yes stuff for their own promos instead of let's actually like work with the media to try to right. get more interest here but right. yeah no I, I totally agree but you're trying and that's what the that's what the queen city press is doing right mm -hmm. and that's what you've been doing as my charlotte soccer show is is doing as well and there's a lot of good people here in town that are are trying to connect with an audience i think there's a lot of good independent journalists a lot of good independent media in the league which is great uh, so at the same time as, as as much as i want things and to kind of maybe um be broadcast from a, a bigger megaphone it's nice for i think independent journalists to cover the league your experience i know there's been obviously some bumps in the road but as a whole as an independent journalist coming covering mls what's it been like for you yeah um I mean, there isn't a lot of competition, so I do kind of like that aspect of it. Yep. Um, I kind of, you know, there's really only one other local beat writer that covers the team on a regular basis here. Like there's, um, you know, Cincinnati Soccer Talk is a great podcast. They do a lot of great things, um, but it's a lot of 
people that are doing it, you know, on in their spare time. And so uh, at training, it's just me and the the local newspaper reporter, which is actually they the Cincinnati Enquirer does a really good job of covering. Like I know not all newspapers do invest into their soccer coverage, but um, yeah, I mean, in that regard, I feel like it it kind of helps me because uh, the fans know they've known me all this time. They know that they can trust my work and that I'm gonna, you know be there for them to give them that you know their fantasy updates that they need <laughs> but, um but yeah it is tough too just because um and, and the other you know being independent you know it's just me and so there's not um there's not a lot of uh i don't have all these people editors to fight for my coverage and, and things like that so it's a balance of you know it's good and bad but i enjoy it and i love soccer and so it's a good I enjoy it. <laughs> and you always get you always get to publish exactly what you want, which I think is probably like that's what I love most about this show yeah. is that like the the re I said said this to people like the reason that I one of my biggest motivations for doing this show is because it's the show that I want to exist about Charlotte FC. So I think I get a similar vibe from you about why you're doing Queen City Press, and I hope that anyone who's a fan of just like independent coverage and of any team. Even if they're they live in Cincinnati, even if they're a Charlotte fan watching the show, we'll go subscribe to you right now for sure. Yeah. There's free trials too, so if anyone wants <laughs> try to the check free out trial, just exactly, this week you know? the FC Cincinnati Charlotte coverage, it's you can check out the free trial. <laughs> just learn more about MLS, you know exactly. You know, yeah, cheers. I think that's the goal, right? As if you're thinking about the maturation of a Charlotte soccer fan you're thinking about somebody who is getting introduced to the league getting introduced to its club and now the rabbit hole goes even deeper right and you can you can learn about everything you need to know uh, about mls so laurel uh failer she's here she's from the queen city press thank you so much for being our special guest on the show do you want to make a prediction i'm not gonna hold you to this by the way but if you have one in your head for the match on saturday you're welcome to to use that as your parting shot here yeah, I just think, you know, I know I'm going to sound like the homer picking FC Cincinnati because that's the team I cover, but I, you know, they are in first place for a reason. I, you know, I, I think it's going to be a, a defensive battle. I still think it's going to be low scoring, but I'm going to say one nothing FC Cincinnati. Reverse that. <laughs> Okay. I mean, okay. it's tough going on the road. You know, Columbus but, was undefeated for a reason too. That's true. You know, that was an impressive and really wild uh, victory for Charlotte. Yeah. That you know, that is one to hang your hat on. So, well, we'll say it's, it should be a great match. It's it's Saturday night. It's it's seven thirty, uh, Bank of America Stadium. We call it the Fortress here in Charlotte. It's it's against uh, another. It's the Ohio two step, if you will. Uh, Columbus, then then Cincinnati. For what it's worth, I'm a, a much bigger fan of the city of Cincinnati than I am the city of Columbus. So at least. Um, the FCC, it's got that going for them. Um, so well, that's your Queen City. So you yes, gotta... and the Queen, the Queen City Darby, the Queen City Darby, Saturday night in Charlotte. Who we got to make some fake trophy for this one, like a college football uh, trophy game, if you will, Danny. Maybe you could use one of those Emmys you got up there behind you on the yeah. on the on the shelf there. Oh, those old things. <laughs> cheers to you, Danny. Uh, cheers to you, Laurel. Thanks so much. It's it's another episode of Charlotte Soccer Show. Uh, stay tuned. we got a lot of content coming this weekend. We're going to have, if you haven't uh, heard our interview with Sporting Director Zoran Cronetta, you can hear that as well. Um, stick around. You can, you can catch that on our podcast feed. Make sure you listen there. If you're watching on YouTube, find Charlotte Soccer Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. It's going to be an awesome episode. Uh, but again, Laurel, thanks so much for your time. It's good to see you. I appreciate you joining the show. Thanks for having me anytime. Danny, it's always a pleasure to see you. I can't wait to see you on Thursday over at um, HM Health Performance Park to, to do our interview with, with Zoran to, to check out practice. And there's a there's a new uh, there's a new player potentially that we didn't even mention on this show. Uh, we'll get to that. His name's Liel Abada. Will he play on Saturday night? It's a tease, Danny. It's a tease. We'll talk about that and more with Zoran Canetta. We'll see you next time.